Hello ladies, how are you doing? This is Beverly with Beverly Hills Health and Wellness Coaching. We are here again this Sunday talking about women's history. Uh, more of a conversation regarding women's health and what you can do to navigate this midlife and deal with some of these symptoms that women find overwhelming. So my partner that is going to be joining us on the conversation is Dion, and she is there. Hi, Dion. Hi there. How are you? Hi. I am well. I'm well. We have people joining us. There's freedom from the hunt, looks like. So yeah. happy to see you here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to add them in the comment section for us. So we'll be here about 30 minutes. And as I said, we talked last Sunday around women going through this menopause period and still leading into this summer sexy body and having a very intimate relationship with your partners and so now we're talking about what you can do to stay fit as we look into this spring season for bikinis and swimsuits and everything so i am going to let dion introduce herself since i popped on first and partially did that for myself so dion welcome so glad to have you here <laughs> Hi, I am so happy to be here, our second Sunday, yay. So I am Dion, a certified holistic health coach and a menopause coach. I'm also an author, a speaker, and a yoga instructor. I am the founder of Balance Beyond 40, where I empower women to take back their lives and their health. We have so much going on each day from caring for our children, mm -hmm. caring for elderly parents, working full-time jobs, both inside and outside of the home. And to top it off, we got this hormonal thing going on right so yes. that men don't have to deal with so so much we have going on and i want to empower women take your life back take your health back and you're not alone absolutely thank you dion and i see you all over the place girl you are doing yoga classes you are supporting women in the community traveling out of the country you are doing the thing and this is the thing about women during midlife sometimes we want to listen to the narrative of what people tell you like once you get to midlife your life is going to be going downhill and i'm here to say absolutely not you can be the best version of yourself these things that you have on your bucket list is time to pursue them and you have to be healthy to do so so if i haven't formally introduced myself i'm beverly with beverly hills health and wellness coaching i'm a certified health coach and i'm the founder of the body and lifestyle academy so i help women to lean into this midlife and be confident have a slimmer sexy body and be able to step into a powerful next level life and we do this by taking care of ourselves ladies so we're going to ask each other questions and have a conversation around this topic of nutrition and healthy eating i run a detox in my community on a consistent basis and one of the things that i find is a detox is one of those things that will do a absolute reset in your body and as we're talking about spring the season is changing the flowers are coming up and this is the perfect opportunity to lean into nutrition so one of the things that was so funny to me as a health and wellness coach we kind of take things for granted but i had a presentation that i did some months back and i was talking to women and men about nutritious food and eating real food and there was this conversation amongst themselves like yeah we eat real food we always eat real food and i was like okay can you explain what you're eating and they were talking about things that they picked up at the fast food place or things that they <laughs> got out of packaged foods and i was like okay so let's start there what is real food and what i call real like food or fake food so for me when i think of real food i think back to my upbringing we were brought up in a rural area everything was planted came from the ground from mother earth and it provided us with vitamins and nutrients this is not to say you can't find good foods in other places but the basis of your nutrition if it's not coming from that source 
without being tampered with, with glyphosate and all types of chemicals to grow things really fast and all of these hormones that's added. Those substances change what food is. It becomes food-like. So if your body is not able to abstract, abstract, detract, <laughs> what is the word I'm trying to say? If you can extract, yeah. like what the body needs, vitamins and nutrients. On a cellular level. The nutrients it's, yeah. that are absorbed. It's not food. It's yeah. not food. So yes. I'm going to let you jump in there since I'm yeah. stammering over the word extract. So go ahead and let's have a conversation around that because I really need Everybody who's listening to understand the baseline of nutrition is real food. Yeah. So what I'll say to that, Beverly, so I, women in my tribe, they're mostly over 40, right? And they'll say to me, look, I'm taking care of the kids. Like I said, I'm doing all these things. I, I don't have time to cook. It's, it's, there are not enough hours in the day to cook. Like that is the, one of the number one things that I, I hear from them. So what do they do? They go to the fast food, Uber Eats and, and all of this stuff because you have to feed the kids and you have to eat, right? But I, I say to them, look, if you are serious about investing in your health for tomorrow, right? The real food you're talking about is almost like putting money in the bank. And I try to, to, to say that to people that as you eat, real food you are mm -hmm. banking for your health you're putting yes. in a deposit for later on mm -hmm. and you may know this statistics Beverly that um, well it's not really a statistic it's some based on studies that a lot of what children eat and adults ate during their childhood is really what carries them through their adulthood mm -hmm. right and so mm -hmm. nowadays I don't know if you notice that a lot of young people are getting really sick and even passing right where older people are living are outliving younger people yes and it said it's a lot of it goes back to a lot of the nutrition mm -hmm. that older people grew up on that from childhood that are sustaining them yes. and what's troublesome to me is that we are teaching our children how not to eat well mm -hmm. we're almost setting mm -hmm. them up for failure mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and so yes we're busy we're all busy i've been there i'm a mom i work yes. full-time I run mm -hmm. my, my, my coaching practice. Right. Um, I do different speaking. I'm writing. I'm doing a ton. So no mm -hmm. one can tell me about being busy. I, I know what being busy is. <laughs> but, but if it's important enough for you to invest in your health, you will organize your life. And I will give mm -hmm. an example. Cook once, eat three times, right? You make a pot of rice. You make a big salad. You make whatever it is some beans or whatever nutritious food yeah. you put them in the freezer you can if you can have three at least home cooked meals mm -hmm. each week i think mm -hmm. you're at the head of the game and the mm -hmm. other thing to that beverly people don't realize the other side of it how much they are spending mm -hmm. when they order out and eat these foods yeah. that they think are cheap yes <laughs> You know, so I'll, 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 I'll leave, I'll hand it back over to you. Yeah, we can literally have a conversation around this for the entire period of time. But I want you ladies, as you're joining, welcome. I see somebody else has joined us, is to understand if you're eating foods that has barcodes all over it, a lot of ingredients in the label, those are the foods that are not serving you because as you're eating food, if your body can't pull the vitamins and nutrients out of it, anything it can't use, it ends up being a toxin and it is stuffed in a fat cell. And over a period of time, that fat cell just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger with toxins that your body is not able to use. And it's not until you go through some type of detox to try to work to shrink some of that information out of your body. Okay. And the other so, thing with that, Beverly, that you, you mentioned that's very important about toxins in your body. And people have to realize that your liver is what's doing the work. Like the if work you overload, mm -hmm. yeah, you overload your body with toxins, things that your body can't use. Your liver has to process all of that. Mm -hmm. And our mm -hmm. liver gets overworked. Mm -hmm. And that's really where, like, I'm a big proponent of detox mm -hmm. myself. I also do that in my program. And I personally do a detox yes. every quarter. Because yes. if your yes. liver is not functioning optimally, you're going to feel it. You are yes. going to feel it. Yeah. Yeah. And your body 
body gives you sign and it lets you know things are not optimal. It'll give you little telltale signs. You know, you might have migraine headaches. You might break out with something. Your body is talking to you always. And one of the best ways to answer it is to provide it what it needs to function optimally. So I think we've laid the foundation here of what real food is and what food is that doesn't serve you. And it's to me what I call fake food. Okay. I'm just okay. going to so we have one that. more thing. Memory. Yeah, go ahead. That, because Please I don't. don't think, I think we would be remiss if we left this conversation without talking about the standard American diet, the sad diet. <laughs> Right. So I just I just had to say it because a lot of us are living on the standard American diet. If you're not familiar with the sad diet, go Google it. Um, and that's one of the things that we have to try to get off. Yes. And speaking of the standard American diet, <laughs> I am actually doing a master class tomorrow. And I have three days that we're going to be talking about different topics relating to getting that bikini body. So it's slimmer, sexy, you, and it's a detox series. And on one of those days of my master class, I talk solely about the standard American diet. So that is perfect lead in the standard American diet. We need to understand it and make choices accordingly. So I see we have a couple more people to join us. Raquel, so grateful to see you. I saw somebody named Sammy, I think, that had joined us. Thank you all for being here. We are continuing the conversation. Look at all the hearts. Thank you so oh, much. My so, <laughs> so we are actually continuing the conversation around nutrition because this is Women's History Month and we've been here talking about what we can do to support ourselves during this journey. So we had several questions. So the first one, we talked about food, what real food is and what fake food was. And so I have a question around nutrition because a lot of women who are on this menopause journey are dealing with so many symptoms. Some of them pretty mild and some of them can be really extreme. And there's a myriad of ways, myriad of ways that we can navigate this. But the number one thing that you can do is look at nutrition to support you in this menopause journey. Um, there are symptoms like hot flashes you hear women talk about. Weight gain is the big one. That was the one that was like, hey, what's happening to my body? I've always been the same size. I don't understand. I have to stop eating any differently. But when those hormones start to shift, then that weight can show up. And there are things that you can do to navigate this period of time by looking at what you're eating. And foods can be a trigger. I am here to let you know about one that I had a big issue with. It's like you work, I worked internationally, traveling in and out of the country, three and four weeks out of the country working. By the time I got back home to my house and I was settled, it's just like, I just need a nice glass of wine because <laughs> I'm back. Let's celebrate. And it's like I found that that did not serve me, did not serve me. So alcohol ladies will give you challenges during this menopause journey. So keep that one in mind. Another one, big one, which I'll talk about in my training, my master class, is sugar. You got to I kick the sugar. You got to kick the sugar. So I see you jumping at the bit. So I'm going to pass it to you, Dion, and let you yeah. chime in. And I see some more people have joined us. Thank you for being here. So I, I, I have to get on the belly fat that you talked about. Look, you, didn't, <laughs> you didn't say it so. So I, I'm like raw, right? You, you said it more eloquently around the midways, right? It's belly fat. <laughs> got to have a slim waist. Yep, that is He's slimmer and women. sexy. <laughs> Yep, that's what my women call it. So you do gain weight. I do agree with that. But I get so many complaints about the be the extra, the, the muffin top, they call yeah. it, or the extra belly. And like, what's the deal with that? Like, what's yeah. up with that? And women, I feel you because th those hormonal changes, particularly estrogen is drying up. Yes. Yeah. Estrogen yes. is drying up and is driving that extra belly fat. Mm -hmm. And yeah. while you need to be pay attention to your nutrition, it's not all your fault. It right. is not all your fault, right. but you have to understand what is happening and be able to address mm -hmm. the estrogen Truly. deficiency, Truly. right? So um, 
And I think some of the things we're talking about really helps with that Um, because you either have to go to an extreme situation where you might have to do hormone replacement therapy and get estrogen Mm -hmm. or Mm -hmm. bioidentical hormones or something Mm -hmm. like that. But it all roads lead back to Mm -hmm. starting with nutrition first. But Mm -hmm. I feel you on the the, the belly fat. I'm actually doing an article uh, on that. So it's quite interesting. Yeah. It's it's one of those things that is an indicator of health as well, because as a woman, if you have a tape measure, you shouldn't be in excess of 34 inches. So if you put that measurement, measure tape around the waist and you're over 34 inches then you need to seriously think about making some changes in your diet and your lifestyle because that's the indicator of having major health concerns yeah and sometimes women sorry no go ahead no, I was no, no, no. Say, I'll let you um, go. Those, those major concerns are not just, they're major. You're, you're talking about stroke. You're talking about high blood pressure. You're talking about heart disease. I mean, they are big. And so with the belly fat and the, 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 the hormonal changes that are going on, they can be risk factors as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And that's another thing about women. You know, we hit the top of the list when it comes to heart disease. So this is a major concern for us. So I think of menopause as a time of self-care. We've been taking care of everybody up until this point, and our bodies is raising the flag and say, hey, I need you to take care of you now, okay? I need you to eat right. I need you to move. I need you to do some strength training. I need you to go outside for some time in nature, take care of your well-being. For me, I had a massage this past weekend. I had my manicure, my pedicure. So you have to do these, whatever that is for you. But these are non-negotiables for me at this point. I'm an empty nester, so I don't have the same responsibilities as I had before. I remember I used to be traveling every weekend trying to do something for the boys because they were all in sports so it's like now it's all about me 100 percent unapologetically (laughs) unapologetically that's the beauty about there are great things about aging right we're both women over 50 and there are wonderful things further over (laughs) yeah yeah well i'm over there too (laughs) but there are wonderful things about aging and you know we all want to age with vitality and still have a lot of oomph, you know and really what it can do the things we want to do have the energy to do the things we want to do yeah and roads lead back to nutrition how you eat and how you take care of yourself like beverly just mentioned yes absolutely Absolutely. And that's another conversation that we can have is the reality of how you're feeling when you hit this midlife journey and you're literally finding yourself in menopause. There's a narrative out there that's very outdated. It's a stigma that, you know, once you get to this point in your life that you don't have the relevancy because you're not of childbearing age anymore. And it's it's really something that you really have to decide, like, is this truly who I am or am I just buying into a narrative that as far as I'm concerned is based on a male perspective? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Most, most of what happens in women's health or what we're given or told are based on male's perspective. And that's why the new legislation that's out there for women's health is so important Mm -hmm. because we need more investments, money, resources in order to do research on us we are different we are not like men why are you telling me what i need we haven't done any research on me you know so yeah anyway i look at it it in a broader perspective it's like you know everything that comes to be has come through the brilliance of the woman yes yes so oh yeah that's what i'm looking at (laughs) <laughs> for real <laughs> absolutely there are no men without us women <laughs> nope nope we run we run the world okay <laughs> yes i think there's a song about that as well yeah okay Beyonce. so yeah that's, that's exactly it so another question that i have here is some women want to know like is there something that they can do to supplement their nutrition to help them navigate this period and support their hormonal shifts? And 
I'm not a big proponent of relying solely on supplements to get you through this journey. However, if you're not eating properly, you need to find something to bring up balances. But once you get to this place where you understand what your body needs and you feed the cells to nourish you, then you can start weaning yourself off of these um, supplements. One of the things that I've found about supplement because there's like no true um, governance over like one batch over the next batch. You might have one that had a certain percentage and then they make the next batch later. It may be as potent or less potent. So it's kind of playing around with it, but it allows you to make some changes if you're deficient in something. I think magnesium is a big one that women need to bring into their diet. The calcium is very important for your bones. The vitamin D, which is, you know, now that we've gone into the longer days, we can be out in the sun and get more vitamin D. These, these are some of the things that you need to be thinking about as women, as our hormones are shifting to bring this into your diet. So personally, I take vitamin D during the winter months. And by the time we go into the longer days, I'm outside as often as I can to get my natural vitamin D. Yeah. Um, and what I'll add to that, too, is that we, you know, some people say I eat well, I don't have to take vitamins or supplements, right? And so maybe you're not a big proponent of supplements, but what I will say, over the last several years, maybe hundreds of years, mm -hmm. um, our soil has been yes. depleted of nutrients, yes. right? Yes. Our soil yes. used to be richer mm -hmm. in nutrients, mm -hmm. and so those nutrients mm -hmm. used to pass onto our food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Today, the, the, soil, the soil is depleted. Why? Right. From over farming, from right. over farming. And right. so a lot of what we would get in certain doses from some of the foods we eat, we're not getting anymore. Right. And that's why it's critical in some instances to make sure you're supplementing. So mm -hmm. the best thing to do was just have your doctor do a, a blood a, a blood testing. Do a panel, see, blood panel. Yeah, mm -hmm. do a panel and see where you're deficient. But a mm -hmm. lot of us, you mentioned vitamin D, Oh, you know, we think that we, we are not, and especially if we're darker skin, we think we don't need to be out in the sun and we have it. No. But it's not about that. Vitamin D is still very important. And then yes. you have a, your omega that you talked about. There's yes. also vitamin mm -hmm. C and yes. A. There's so many right. that we need, especially as women and menopausal women, right? So mm -hmm. don't underestimate the power of supplementation. But I will right. also say, that if you're going to embark on a supplement journey, make sure that you are getting your supplements from a quality and mm -hmm. reputable source. Mm -hmm. Right. Not right. all supplements are created equally. There mm -hmm. are a lot of the cheaper generic mm -hmm. ones mm -hmm. that have mm -hmm. a lot of fillers yes. in there on, mm -hmm. and artificial ingredients. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you want to make sure that the supplement, because if you take that, then you might as well take nothing, right? Because it's mm -hmm. going to just do more harm then it's going to do good. So make sure right. you're investing in good, high quality supplements. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very well said. Um, I used to be a part of a, I think a multi-level marketing got like 20 years ago or something and they had really high quality supplements so i actually used to be religious on taking these supplements but then i found myself like you know what i got like a dozen pills that i gotta take and just like Okay, let me find what real food, because I'm the kind of person, because of the way I grew up, I eat a lot of green things. It's really one of those things I find so delicious. Like today, I got up and juiced uh, celery. So that was something to kickstart my morning off. Mm -hmm. I have my lemon water every morning. I have green, yep. green drinks that I have. So I really have worked over the years to bring natural, organic, items into my diet so i'm taking care of my body and i can tell when i'm off but i truly agree with you there are supplements that are on the market that are filled with so much crap like you're spending all this money and it's not really serving you to the best degree possible so definitely look into possible high quality ones and your doctor usually can always recommend some type of um supplement that you need to balance out your hormones a little bit better so definitely Okay, so a couple more questions. We're running down to the last like 10 minutes. Let's see how quickly we can run Five. through them. <laughs> okay, 
So um, managing your weight and the metabolism change, like what can you do to support your body during this time? I say specifically, moving your body will help you. I know sometimes women say, you know what, I don't like to work out. I don't like to work out. Well, the re reality is you don't have to be in a gym, you know, on the treadmill doing level seven for, you know, 30 minutes, but you have to move your body. I remember throughout all of my fitness classes, there was always this phrase, use it or lose it. So if you're not moving your bodies, ladies, you're going to set up inflammation. Your joints are going to be stiff. You're not going to have the flexibility. You hear about women who broke their hips. You have to move. And it's different from person to person on how you choose to move. Me personally, I used to be a warner. I used to do like 10 miles. I don't do that anymore. In my mind, I would love to. But at my age, I'm thinking like, you know what? These knees have taken me many places. I am so grateful. I don't have any problems with my knees. But I don't need to be running 10 miles at this point. I can go out and have a walk and enjoy my time in nature the same way that I did when I was walking. I'm mean, when I was running, but now when I walk, I'm walking for an hour, sometimes an hour and a half depends on my day. And I am so like zen. It's, it's like, I feel like I've just gone through a massage or something because my mind is clear. My muscles are relaxed. I burn calories. I'm shooting for my 10,000 steps. This serves me, and it's really amazing. I've traveled so much. I've lived around the world. And one of the things that I find interesting is like when I'm in the airport, just people watching. I'm not choosing to do that, but you're just waiting for the plane. And it's just so amazing. I'm like looking at people's waistline. They're far beyond 34 inches. They've got bellies. Looks like, you know, people are just so unhealthy. You see them with their luggage and they're, you know, out of breath. Like, these are things that let me know I'm so grateful that I've taken care of my body. When I'm on the plane, I've got my luggage. I don't have to be the damsel in distress and asking for somebody to help me. Oh, I pick my luggage up and I throw it up in that overhead bin. Oh, because I'm lifting weights. So you have to find what works for you as a season change. Maybe it's gardening for you. You're a yoga instructor. I take my little yoga every morning. My mat, whenever I travel, I have a travel yoga mat. That's one of the things that serve me. I love moving my body, and I'm so grateful that I can move my body. I've been affiliated with the armed forces for many, many decades of my life, and I've seen members who lost legs, lost arm, lost eyesight. So I have all of my elements. I am going to be out there. I'm grateful for the ability to be able to move. So I'll let you share. Yes, um, talking about moving. So I too was a runner for over 25 years. I love to run and I love how you mentioned there's something that walking is doing for you right now that I think as a runner, you probably felt it's like you get this natural high, like you're mm -hmm. just out yes. in the water. Yes. I always love to run um, mm -hmm. outdoors, which is part of the problem because my knees <laughs> about about maybe three four years ago my knees and my back and my ankle started to talk to me and they were like this kind of pounding is no longer working for you you are now over 50 that's not working and i had to listen to my body and step back so now i don't do the six ten miles like i used to either because i can't i'm listening to my body so now yes. i do a lot of walking mm -hmm. and i just got back from dominica for our women's retreat and i did yeah. it awful lot of hiking so now yeah. that's my new thing i am a hiker i'm a hiker that's what i'm saying but i also want to say um for women of that certain age over 40 changing your workout is very important so weight training or strength training mm -hmm, i'll say mm -hmm. strength training mm -hmm, becomes mm -hmm. even more important because what? you're fighting yes. you're losing estrogen so your mm -hmm. bones are becoming more brittle mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so you're at yeah. higher risk for osteoporosis right you're at higher risk for heart disease mm -hmm. you're at higher mm -hmm. risk for type 2 diabetes yeah. Um, you are at higher risk for dementia, mm -hmm. all of these things. Mm -hmm. So an exercising helps to kind of bring them back or at least stave off 
mm-hmm. all of those things mm-hmm. but you have right. to choose the exercise that's right for you but right. if you are over 40 strength training must must be a part of your yeah, your, right. your workout and i'm not mm-hmm. talking about going in the gym and bulking up and looking like a bodybuilder right. that is not what i'm right. talking about right. you can right. strength train with your own body weight mm-hmm. a plank mm-hmm. Yes, yes, I do those every day. Yep. A, a sit up is yes. strength training because you're strengthening different parts of the body, right? So mm-hmm. if you're listening and you don't have any kind of strength training as part of your routine, I mean, we urge you to yes. at least start once a week, even cans in your house, do yes. something. Yes. It helps. Bottle of water. Bottle yeah. of water. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yes. It doesn't take much. Um, since we've gone through the pandemic, there has been so many of the exercises that you used to go to the gym for that you can actually get them online. A lot of fitness instructors are doing their virtual classes. I know one of my trainers went from having in-person classes to also supplement online courses and also having some that help people within a certain age range so those people that are 60 70 that are not as mobile but they can do like cheer yoga there are so many things that are available for you from the comfort of your home but yeah. just choose one and get started um, one of the things that I did for Some of my clients who weren't used to doing a lot of aerobic activity just to get them started very easily, there's all of these like YouTube videos that have like clocks that they time how long you could do walking in place around your house to cover a certain number of miles. That was really easy. And some of them, they went to a couple of miles really quickly and didn't realize how simple it was. So just start where you can and your body will give you signs. It's like, oh my God, I feel so much better. Some of the aches and pains are starting to bypass you know what I used to feel like every morning a lot of the ladies that I had talked to talk about this sleep got better when they start to incorporate some of those so please ladies reach out to us if you need some suggestions I'm looking at the time and I cannot believe we hit our 30 minute mark and we still have more <laughs> questions to go but hopefully what we've shared so far has been very helpful for you we're available to support you even further as i said this weekend i am finishing up the details for a master class that's going to be kicking off for me on monday it's called slimmer sexy you the detox series and then we will meet every day at 2 p.m and cover different topics every day and we did talk about the standard American diet and the sugar so I encourage you if you don't know where to get started come join me it's a free class doesn't call you any, cost you anything just register and you'll get the link and you can join me so that's what I have for you I'm Beverly with Beverly Hills Health and Wellness Coaching so if I can support you any anyway please reach out to me so Dion I will leave it for you to close us out yeah so if you're listening and you are a premenopausal woman it's perimenopause, you're in menopause or you're post-menopause and you're struggling with different symptoms, please join my tribe over at Facebook, um, alleviating menopause symptoms naturally, or follow me here on Instagram at Balance Beyond 40. Um, I am I support women all day, all night. That's what I do all the time. Um, <laughs> there are solutions out there to help you through yes. this journey. I know it can feel um frustrating it can get Mm -hmm. overwhelming because there's so much information out there for you to kind of move through to figure out what you should or shouldn't do but Mm -hmm. coming into my tribe that is what i help my ladies to do to figure out what course they need to take meaning what path um some support on different Mm -hmm. solutions and um things that they can do for themselves and just information Mm -hmm. one of the most important thing you can things you can do for yourself during this menopausal journey transition is to educate yourself arm Mm -hmm. yourself with information so you can make the right choices and decision because all too often you have Over 50% of women enter the menopausal phase without even having a clue as to what's happening. 
Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm, that's what mm-hmm. Beverly and I yes. do, right? We are yes. on missions to support yes. these women, yes. to make them, to raise awareness and to educate you so you can empower yourself to make better choices yes. for yourself when it comes to your health. Yes. So that's all I have. Follow me on Instagram at Balance Beyond 40 or head over to Facebook um, to join my tribe over there, alleviating perimenopause and menopause symptoms naturally. Until next time, Beverly and I go- are going to continue to collaborate and do different things. Um, we serve similar markets. And I think together, as they say, right, um, together, we're stronger together. We're, yes. we're better together than by ourselves. And so Absolutely. that's what we're trying to do. So stay tuned. You might yes. see some more work from us. Um, in this space and it's all about supporting you because you're not alone. Absolutely. Very well said. (laughs) Thank you so much, Dion. It's been a pleasure. Ladies that joined us, thank you so much for being here. It means so much that you're here and the information that you take, you can support others. And again, if there's something we can do, put the comment, put in the comment something that you're interested in hearing us talk about or addressing and we can do that for you. So take care, ladies, and we're going to be closing out the month and one more week for Women's History Month. So it's been a pleasure to be with you. Yes. Take care. Take care. Bye.